What's up everyone? My name is Zach Redrub and you're listening to the It's Not A Phase podcast. On this episode, I'm joined by South London artist Kid Bucky to talk all about his brand new EP, Mass Hysteria. In our chat, we discuss why he chose that name for the EP, his mindset following up last year's Cheaper Than Therapy full length, working with the likes of Corey Taylor and Billy Martin, and loads more. Now, if you enjoyed this or any other episode of the podcast and you want to show your support, there's a few ways that you can do that. Number one, leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. It takes just a few seconds and it really does help. Number two, share this on your social media, whether that be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Or number three, if you want to go the extra mile, you can pay a little bit each month to join the Patreon, and in return you'll get access to episodes early along with some of our perks. Or you can pick up some merch from the store. All the links to that and the podcast socials where you can follow us can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's it's not a phase. .co.uk. And now of all that out of the way, let's jump right into this week's episode of It's Not A Phase. What's up everybody? Thanks for joining me on this episode of It's Not A Phase, where I'm joined by Kid Bucky. How are you doing, man? Partially wonderful, partially doomed, but that's because the never-ending, impending, you know, moment of time, so I'm just racing against it. Yeah, I mean, the government doesn't help, does they? No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just little human skin bags like me, they're going to perish. One day, one day, eventually, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what happens to everyone. Today we're talking about, obviously, you've got a new EP on the way called Mass Hysteria. How are you feeling about putting this release out? And what do you think it showcases about you and your music that maybe your other releases haven't done so yet? I guess this is very concentrated in sound, you know, where I'm more of like a throw a palette at the wall at an empty canvas and see what colours you can mix. It's just pure black, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> If you're just like, if you're going to put, you know, put it into like metaphorical senses. And I guess, you know, it's just, it's just showcasing a facet of my, of my musical palette, man. You know, the shit that I love, the shit that, that fucking makes me, the shit that I am. It's just one layer to the onion. So yeah. I've just thrown a bit of skin at you. And sometimes you make people cry. So this is, I'm hoping it yeah. it's, it's sting, it stings, but just, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, it's nice. It's a, I guess when you've got such a mixed base of people that listen to you and if they've, you know, if they've got to you at, they like you for this or they like you for that, you know, all right, cool, you know, take this, you know, take this six concentrated fucking songs of pure, pure riffing and just fucking have this shit. Because, you know, I'm working on an album where I, get, I guess I get to experiment with my my favourite sounds. And, you know, what, you know, I guess this is more like, let me just concentrate, you know, let me concentrate some sonics into a fucking home. Well, yeah, because it acts as the, the follow-up to last year's album, Cheaper Than Therapy. And, you know, you, you, you did quite a lot across that album and you definitely leaned more into like your rock, metal and emo influences there. But it sounds like on this EP, not only are you kind of like leaning on it more and focusing on it more, you're kind of like, it's kind of a bit more streamlined as well. I don't know if, if you would agree. Yeah, I can't say why I say it's concentrated because it's so, it's just, you know, it's linear to just one, you know, not one sound per se, but... You know, it's, 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 you know, there's no bullshit. It's obnoxiously, it's just obnoxious guitars, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, I guess, and like, you know, it's just, it's like I said, it's another facet to the being and if I can display it, as, you know, to give me fucking give a platform to something I fucking love, you know? And you think it, do you think it kind of showcases something about you that you've not had a chance to, to do yet in your previous work? Yes, definitely showcases the heavier side of my love, which is, um, you know, I, which I put up in drips and drabs, you know, in little over things. You know, you might get a screamo fucking chorus over a, a random grunge song, but this is just, you know, nasty. It's got a, it's a, depends what one, you know, if you want to have some, you know, flows in rapping, then listen to that one. If you just want to have pure screamo, then listen to that one. You know, it's like, yeah. it's just, it's just pure, you know, it's, it's, it's just that, it's that thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So do you think like the, the name Mass Hysteria for the EP kind of helps kind of like as like an umbrella for kind of what's going on here? Yeah, I guess I am a very hysteric person, whether it be mentally or even just fucking crying in the bath because I hate who I am. But um, no, I'm joking. I haven't done that in many a year. But um, it's, um, it was, I guess it, it's not, even the song Mass Hysteria on it isn't like the title fucking song. It's just, it was more like it just was the, the project name was fitting to probably me as a part, you know, a part of my person where, Hysteria is pretty much a muse. I enjoy chaos. You know, I enjoy chaos. I thrive in it, if anything. That it's kind of peaceful. And I guess, you know, this isn't chaotic, say, but I guess music itself is literally a beautiful collision of sound. Yeah. So, 
you know, there's some, you know, that you just you pull inspiration from that shit because I'm, you know, we're all hysteric sometimes. You know, you know, sometimes we leave our houses and someone's just had a ma- ra- mass rage act, crying and screaming, and then they go out and they're partying with their mates. Like, yeah, nothing's wrong. So, you know, we'll all be hysteric motherfuckers here and there. That's life in 2022. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's life a hundred years. Yeah, I mean, when you say, you say like um, chaos is, you know, you're kind of comfortable in chaos. I mean, you can kind of see that in in your work, you know, because obviously you kind of dabble with all these different sounds and stuff. But I guess when you're the creator of chaos, you're, you're you know, it's your rule book. It's playing by your rules. That's the funny thing is, is that's one thing I like doing: being in a room and structurally structurally tearing people down into the most cerebral version of themselves. So you just start with one, and all of a sudden you just got like like everyone's just talking about the most. I don't know. It's just I just I like shit like that. I'm a very, I'm a very mentally focused, challenging dude. You know what I mean? So I guess when you could, when you could roll out, when you could roll out like methodical madness in a room and just start seeing it singe into every little corner, you're just kind of sitting there jerking, it, like, yeah, look what I'm doing. So a little uh, peek into how you work. Um, no, I'm just jest filled. You know, I, I do like, I do like people kind of like breaking down their fourth wall. Yeah. Of like, you know, who I like? Oh, I'm, I'm under protocol. You know, I kind of scrap all the rules and just throw that shit out of the rules. So it's like, you know, sometimes I enjoy hacking away at the masquerade and then just seeing the, like, the naked version of who you are. And I think that's where we get to relate the most. And I guess that I kind of, you know, that's a kind of like a uh, mantra or function to my being. It's just kind of being naked. Even now, I could probably be naked, but today I chose to wear a jumper. But I mean, that kind of reflects in your in your music as well, because you're not conforming. You're, again, playing kind of by your own rule book. Like you, like I say, we we just talk about like the previous album, people in therapy. You're doing all these different things, and is it the typical way that people write albums or kind of structure songs or the genres they kind of splice together? No, but you've dabbled with it and it worked. I mean, the album got to what number seven on UK iTunes rock chart, which is a massive feat. Congratulations, by the way. We nearly broke the official chart. Just we're not too far off it, so. It was number one. No, it was, yeah, it was like number one best set of the set in Amazon for a week as well, which is fucking sick. And, and I try, I use those as triumphs, not because of, oh, look at me, look at me, but more like, you know, when you, I guess, when you're not like a PR band or a fucking, you know, a moment that everybody wants to champion, you know, you have to kind of see where you fit on this earth, especially in music. So seeing people cultivate to you without, without, you know, without the mass, the mass grooming of mind, which sometimes, you know, lots of PRs and shit do to these fucking artists. It's more like, you know, it's nice to see human symbiosis by just having music, sound and character. And I'm a huge advocate for, you know, I love this fucking shit. So I, 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 I literally, I don't want to be anything else other than the muse I am, which is, you know, give it to you how I've got to give it. I don't give a fuck if you like me or not, but you might, you, I, I'm very kind. I might not be nice. And I always say this, nice is a very, hi, ah, do you want a cup of tea? Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, but kind is, yo, go fuck yourself because you're a prick today, but I love you. And, you know, I dabble in both of them, but I guess, you know, and that goes into my music as well. So you cutthroat, but it's cutthroat because you just kind of seed through the bullshit. And, um, you know, and sometimes it's strong, sometimes it's challenging, sometimes it's misunderstood, but it all comes from a place of care because I care so fucking much that it's like, I haven't got time to fuck around. Let's change the, let's change music, let's change the world and, if we can't change the world, let's change corners of it at least by just putting little bits of your ethos out to every little place you go. You know, that's what that's you know, that's why I'm here. And you know, and I guess I'm I, you know, hence why back to the narrative of why I'm happy to champion like triumph those things is because I never expect to have none of the shit that I fucking do anyway. So when I have it, I kind of play it down. But I'm very happy to see that there is a bunch of people that have gravitated to the mentality I put out and they hold it dear to them and they want to fucking ride with this little journey, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's important to be direct because, you know, sometimes people kind of dance around subjects and what they actually want to do and who they want to be. And then, you know, you talk about not really being like a, a PR kind of act, but people still gravitate towards you. I guess that kind of just shows how organic of a, a character and what you kind of deliver for people. It's vulnerability, man. It's just strength. It's your armor. It's your superpower. You don't try to be anything you're not. You don't play to anything you don't stand for something that you don't believe in you stand for everything that you understand you know you stand for everything that's right so you champion all of the things you don't have to broadcast yourself doing everything at every moment just to show that you do it because you do it anyway it's natural to you so you never thought you have to do that you know you just a and I, you know like i said the full four again it's like breaking the you know i'm you know i see all the messages i see everything i'm not i don't have to pretend or like choose who i selectively have to you know for what looks good or not like i'm you know my dick's out i, I have a black dildo in the corner that I, <laughs> 
a satellite here and there and just wave it around like fucking a, like a like a friggin' lightsaber. You know, I'm I'm a human being and I'm I'm as flawed as the rest of them. So I enjoy being that a human being in music that you know just gets to be just gets to be themselves. And whether that's a detriment, it will sure be a superpower because all I care about is you know peeling back the layers of people that are scared and seeing who they really are under all of that fucking mustard. So hell fucking yeah, man. I mean, we, we, we talk about like obviously how well cheap cheaper than therapy went down. How do you kind of feel about how that album went down and what it achieved for you? And you're know, looking retrospectively now, like nearly a year since that came out. I think as an artist from where I'm from, especially in South London, doing the type of music I do, it was nice to see. You know, like mo- most of the people on the album that featured with me are people that I even started doing music for. So to share a sonic space with them share moments and achievements with the people that even, you know, that I've learned from, that I've, you know, you can't describe that shit, man. And that's why I'm here. That's why I fight for this shit because I I didn't, you know, it just came from being a human being. It just came from being a fucking loving this shit and being honest to yourself. And when you're honest to yourself, you get honest shit back. And so, you know, it's not about how well, he he could have done nothing. He could have, to to some people it's done nothing. But like I said, a moment in my timeline that I get to share Sonic spaces with the people that I grew up doing music f- fucking caring to about, you know, that's a, it's fucking dope, man. 100%. Like, you know, one of the, the people you had on that album was Billy Martin from Good Charlotte, who you then brought on for, for the EP. Like, what, what did what made you want to work with him again? Billy is such a, Billy's like a powerhouse of a musician, man. And even, you know, even in Good Charlotte, like, you can, like, he's got such influence in those songs. He's like, you kind of just want, I don't know, I just want people to shine in their own individual, right? He's so, he's amazing at what he does. And we got like a very good chemistry. Like I'll write songs and be like, yo, Billy, can you just turn this in? Can you put this in the microwave and turn it to a one minute and let it come out fucking piping? Do you know what I mean? Because so that's what, what our kind of shit is like. And I just, you know, and I guess we work well. So it's like, whether we're doing some heavy metal shit, whether we're doing some fucking emo in the dark, she does her makeup, all of that shit. You know, it's always, it's always a moment. And I love it because it's like a complete expression of everything we both love. Yeah, and if I make music that I love, and I'll never make music that I don't fucking feel. You know, I won't just do music like some. I, I won't just make music because I make music. Like I love it, and I want every piece of the catharsis to go in it. You know, the so you know, so they do feel it, and maybe that is why you know I don't have. You know, I've got like a, I've got like a nice little cult, not cult shit, but it's like the people that fuck with you, you kind of see what they're like in relation to you, and that's what's fucking cool. Because if you put yourself out there to be yourself, you kind of attract the same people you that are like you. Yeah. So it's, it's very fucking nice to see. And even if you change people that aren't like that, like even when I've been fucking, I just went out on a road with Cassie. Yeah, I turned people feral. Like <laughs> you got to see like people shift mentality and mood into this cerebral fucking fight or flight. Like I'm losing my mind type people when they're just adrenaline filled. Eh? And I, I loved that kind of shit. Like, changing people's state of being, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. fucking, you know, I love that shit, man. I, I, I'm very privileged and proud to be able to do what I do. And even to be able to have people like, you give a fuck, man. Like, you know, I know that, you know, just, just do interviews and journalism, and blah, blah. But, you know, when people give a fuck about it and you give a fuck about what you do, you know, you're always going to have a very meaningful, insightful, not just conversation, but learning about the person that you're even talking to and what they, why they love it. Because you yeah. want you know what I'm saying? And I'm very, man, this shit makes me, this shit makes me cry, man. Well, yeah, I mean, like when you, you know, you talk about making those genuine relationships and stuff and still on time, you know, kind of the, the topic of guests that you had on that album, Corey Taylor, I mean, I remember when you kind of tweeted him initially when you, when you first started working with him and you, you see, yeah, you could, you, just, you could just tell by the tweets that you were just like fanboying a bit, but you know, it was genuine. Yeah, man. I was like, yo, we need to do something before we both like, like, It's so crazy. Cause I, like, that's nearly four years ago now. And like that is my like dude, I love that's my brother, man. Like that is my I I, I don't even call like sometimes I don't even call like bro, his name is Big Bro in my phone book, you know. Oh like, really? <laughs> yeah, like it's just like because you know it's that's like that's my brother. I don't have big brothers, so when I've got people that have nurtured and cared and shown me love beyond industry semantics, you know that like from you know I like I could say everything all the time. I could repeat myself. There's 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 many places I've said this sentiment, but. Every time I've said it, 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 it would never change because it means so much. They're my, that's my family, man. Shout out to Vended, shout out to Alicia, shout out to Sid, shout out to fucking Simon, everyone, man. I was like, I love them. Like, you know, I 
I want to give back everything that they've even given me. And I, this might be normal to them, but, you know, like I said, I'm from a part of the planet where I don't expect to know anybody. Yeah. So to do what I do, to make music with the people that give a fuck about to why I even did this shit in the first place. Like, you have to make sure you go full in, not just for your, not just for others, but for yourself. But, but I don't give a fuck about achieving things for myself. I literally want to do things so I can consistently add to the timeline of greatness, uh, push the music that I love as for generations. Hence why I even happy that I'm doing this weird as teenage dirtbag bag thing. Cause it's like that song means so much to me that I would love to make sure that the way I can portray it to another generation is why, you know, it's not just a moment. It's not about doing the song because I get to do it. It's about like, let me, let me, let me, let me challenge a song that's already a timeless classic and add a modern spin to what, you know, so something I love and what means to me and what does it mean to you too? So let's share this moment as well, you know? And it's like, you know, to be able to be in rock music, doing this with the people I love without having no fucking person say, hey, you got to do this or you should work with him. No, we just do this shit because you've stumbled across me and I stumbled across you and we have honest perspectives and conversations and it doesn't come from bullshit places. So I'm all, you're going to always keep seeing shit like that happen because I, I am a fucking, we just, we're just like the realest motherfuckers always have to link up in life before we all fucking die anyway. That's why we're on the phone as well, because you're part of that batch, man. Well, you, you know, you say you want to take like, you make like timeless music and, and stuff and stuff that you, well, I guess it's stuff you want to look back on, you know, maybe five, 10 years down the line and still look back and say, you know what, that still stands the test of time. That's still great. I still fuck with that. I'm still proud of that. I wanted to get to a place in music where I enjoy listening to my music. And it, and it took a while, but I, like, I do listen back to stuff. And I'm like, all right, I enjoy this. I listen back to certain things. Okay, I can I, I can see why this song will last. I can see why this is just a quick moment. I can see why, you know, and I, I do enjoy it. You know, it's a science to it as well. It's just like, you know, like, why does this song connect? What is it about it? What What, what is it about every single piece, moment, you know? And yeah, music's fucking insane. It's chemistry, math, science, and everything else. And I fucking love it, you know? But what, what was it like working with Corey Taylor? Because, you know, you've, you've worked on him for like maybe... It's like three songs now, and obviously you featured on his album as well, his solo album. It's always a trip, you know. It's always a trip to. It's always a trip, man. You don't take that shit for granted. It's, it's you know, take away his status or what he is or who, you know. It's just like it could be anyone that d- done that shit. So it's like, why me? And I guess that's why I do suffer with a lot of fucking imposter syndrome all the fucking time because I'm like, why me? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm a loudmouth, fucking sweary ass manic piece of shit but you know it's also part of the genetic makeup but i guess so you when you you know you just when you do get that shit you gotta be very grateful you gotta be humble you got to and you gotta understand why you have it you gotta understand it's a privilege and you gotta understand it can happen to anyone it can also be taken away from you so be you know do do good with the things you get you know aim to aspire and inspire change what you can don't you know break things a lot because not it's not always don't fix what isn't broken because you don't even know what's broken until you actually just go in the full out and explode anyway. But consistently change things, just staying in stasis is very dangerous. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, back to what I was saying, it's very, it's very cathartic to be able to sit on records with the people you fucking love. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, you know, you, you briefly mentioned working with Wheatus on, you know, it's, from what you described, sounds like kind of like a reworking or reimagining and modernization of Teenage Dirtbag. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, um, uh, it's yeah, it's literally... We spoke about, you know, we, me and Brendan spoke on the phone, the lead singer from Weirs. We spoke on the phone for like an hour. You know, I was just, you know, I, I, I just, you know, just I said, talking about what that song even fucking means to us and me as a person here and why I even want to do the song. And, you know, so doing it is, bro, it's a fucking honour too because, you know, I've got the fucking, I'm singing with dudes, you know, like, I'm, you know, like it's, I don't want to make, this, the song's already the song, so I'd never want to just, do so. I made the song my own version. It's called Bookie's Dirtbag, but it's you know it's me and Brendan singing back to back with the original shit. It's just a little bit heavier, a little bit more fucking harmony everywhere. You know, it's very I don't know. It's 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 it's, it's dope, man. I'm very that's you know that's what I was you know that's it's a huge song. Can't fucking wait. I think this is the, I have not said this anywhere, so I, I, I who fucking knows? <laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, this is just gonna be a thing. Woo! Fucking booking weeders, yeah. Well, I imagine it would have been a bit nerve wracking doing that because you know, Teenage Dirtbag's one of the biggest pop rock songs ever put out, and then you know, putting your stamp on it. Were you any really like, were you nervous at all to, to be doing that? 
Nervous, no, but because nervous, what well, I wasn't nervous to be like shaking, like oh my god, because it felt more fun to than you know I was filled with, filled with nerves. The only thing you do have is the fact that it is such a beautiful piece of music of an era that you don't want to make, you just don't want to fuck it up. Yeah, but us. You know, but but I guess so. You approach it with a. You have to approach those type of songs with you know a little bit of not being selfish because it's not about you. It's about how it will make other people feel because they already have attachment to this song. So let me give a nod to nostalgia, but not let me also give an imprint to who I am on it as well and add identity. And I think I I did that. And I, I guess you know I've sent it over to him as well. He was like, holy shit! So I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was a good that was a good sign, you know. So um. Yeah, I can't wait for that shit to come out. That's like, you know, I don't think people really know. I, I think we've, we've, we've tweeted it. We both, you know, done a little cryptic message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have said like, oh yeah, you know, oh, dude. so I don't think people, I think people might think I'm just doing a cover or some shit. Like, <laughs> Yo, dude, this is like full on clearance kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah here, take the, take the teenage dirtbag fucking torch for a moment and add your fucking, add your flame to it type of shit. It was fucking dope, man. I can't wait to hear it. Like from what, what you've described, it sounds... play it to you. Don't like believe me. <laughs> so when I listen to Mass Hysteria and, and Cheaper Than Therapy, especially when I kind of listen to your work before those two, it definitely sounds like you're an artist now who's like a lot more confident, and you have you feel like you've got a lot more freedom in who you are and what you can do. Would you g- agree with that? Oh fuck yeah! Especially in the new stuff I've been doing, like it's so fucking good that I don't sit here and tear it apart and doubt it. Like, I doubt every piece of music I've ever done. I don't know why I'm weird like that. But because I, you know, because you care about it. So you don't, you know, you don't, you know, it's not just a, I've done this piece, hit song here, it's out. It's, but this shit here, Rick, man, that I've made called after this shit. Like, I'm now like, I just want it all out at the same, but you know what it's like. So it's like, but I guess, like, I, but the shit that I just made shits on all of this fucking shit. I'll be fucking, right. <laughs> okay. Fucking insane. But obviously, this, you know, this shit's coming out. But it's because you, I've sat on this music for fucking, I made this shit in the pandemic. Oh, wow. So yeah, you've been sitting on it for a while. Yeah, so I've had it for a while. So you're kind of just like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, you really want me to be excited about the shit that I heard two years ago? Yeah. But so I guess because, you you know, you move at the time. So where I'm not, you know, where I'm not in that time, it's very like, I can't, I don't attach myself to the, like, like the moment it's coming out. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I'm glad it's fucking out, coming out. Yeah. Because like, I'm so in a new zone and a new place and very excited for people to meet. Even I was uh, doing some new shit with Skin Dread, Mikey Demas from Skin Dread. Um, some shit he was working with for Mike for the album as well. It's fucking insane we've been doing. You know? I'm just like, no, nah, this is like, I'm like, I'm literally like, I'm just pulling out my dick and shaking it like I'm a racker right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, I fucking love you. Well, I guess like like you say, for you, it's it's kind of old because you know you, you know it. You've found it for one, two years, however long it is. Yeah. Better than it right now. Like that's how it's like. You're almost like, oh my god, everyone's gonna hear this. And oh my god, think shit. But that's because you're a musician. But you're like, oh no, wait till you hear the new shit. It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess when you when you put it out, and then obviously you see how the fans react, it kind of gives it a, for you on your side of things like a new kind of sense of life. Yeah, always. You know, I guess it's you know, I, it's got it's weird because you don't make music for other people, but you do at the same time. To, to, yeah, to a degree. Yeah, to a degree because it's like you know, and it, it, so. Even uh, even when they do get it, it's hard because I don't know. Like, I guess you want to enjoy it with them. I don't, I'm talking very pessimistic, like it's coming out of fucking hate. It. It's just that you did, you know, when you do move on to music, you tap very fast from the shit. Like, I don't know. I think you're excited to show what you're capable of now. I think that's kind of where it comes from. Yeah. You, ex- you know, you show, you, you just want to. You show, I guess, yeah, everything's a showcase. So you just want to move with the time. But move music, you're always kind of like working a year or two years behind. So it's always about the new shit, the new shit, the fucking new shit. You've got to hear this fucking new shit. So yeah, you know, we kind of discussed it earlier, but this new EP, Mass Stereo and Cheaper Than Therapy, you know, you, you delve into so many different territories. Metal, like new metal, trap metal, screamo, emo, grunge. Even though you've got all these kind of different things going on, it kind of works. It doesn't sound muddled. You know, there's like a cohesion kind of there. Is it ever difficult to try and get that balance right for you when you're putting these songs together? Yeah, because I know how corny rapping over rock can be. So you're when you know that, I think understanding how to not be a corny fucking artist is important. And I say that with, in, with I say that with impunity because you know rapping sometimes does not complement it. Like you know, music can always complement, but I think 
when something's so sometimes taboo, playing in that realm can be bad. So I think understand, you know, I like I said, I love the fucking science of music. So understanding how to fit in spaces that are not always the easiest to fit in, you know, yeah. you gotta make the nuances fit, you know, sonically vibe. And I think, you know, the more you keep doing it, the more you start to understand it, the more people start to enjoy it. You start to understand what people enjoy about it, especially at live shows. I'm not a click track, backing track type of dude. I'm like, yo, everyone, plug in the play. Let's rock the fuck out. Let's give these people an experience. So, yeah. you know, you get to learn a lot about how to deliver that, especially in, on the music, you know? So, yeah, man, it's a very uh, very rewarding journey, personally, mentally as well, you know? Music express expression is such a... It's such a thing, you know, I, I, like the, the word thing covers all words anyway. So it's, you know, I'm very, like I said, again, circular narrative. I am very privileged to be able to fucking stand on the stage with my guitar, singing and rapping. Privileged because I could have been thrown out into the void and no one screams back. The fact that you do see your shit with millions on it, you, you kind of be like, right, there was millions of people giving a shit. So, you know, that's where the privilege comes into it. I think before I was more stressed out and unprivileged screaming fuck everybody because I had nobody now I'm all like hey no no fuck no one I'm fucking I'll need you so yeah I haven't got nobody anymore like you know I, I see you mention it a lot as you know your tribe yeah man like it's literally like that it's like a fucking vibration stick you fucking you shake that shit and you vibrate you put your shit back out you see what comes back in and you do you, I think when you're an artist you do you cultivate a little world for however long you're an artist for and whoever steps into that world becomes a part of your your madness your 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 everything and then you know you take them on this like this journey and they start building their little things within that world and it becomes this thing it leaves then it becomes a legacy then it becomes all these things and then other people can learn from you again you put out your ethos into the world people start to learn from that they start to echo your sentiments you start to become braver sometimes you know i became braver because of my favorite artist so now all i'm trying to do is become an echo chamber for the same kind of shit as well, what I, I like so much about you is, you know, you're, you're giving off the, you're so unapologetically you, which is, which is great. And, you know, you cultivated this tribe that you refer to it as. And, you know, unfortunately in the music scene, there's the fans and artists that will get some kind of hype and then they kind of maybe neglect and overlook their fans. What do your fans mean to you? I think even answering why I think people can do that, because you get to, you, you see people's character the more you move up the ladder. People sometimes enjoy the megalomania that comes with it rather than the fact that people, you know, it's the people that kind of control this shit. It's not even just the industry, you know, before before the industry has to give a fuck, you know, you can be on blog posts all fucking day. No one gives a shit. You've got to make the people have to, people have to give a shit. So you kind of got, to, it's reciprocation. you got to understand the fact that people put you in any position, big or small. And if you don't understand that, you've got to go fuck yourselves and leave the fucking game, you know? But if you do understand that, you will be, you know, like everything is tenfold, even if it doesn't happen now, because you know how much and how important it is to have the, the will, the love of the people, you know, the understanding of the people. And just to be able to, you know, you, you know, weave in this little timeline you have. No, you don't know how long you've got, but give it your all, give it your, you know, your honesty, give it your vulnerability, give it your, your best, give it your worst, you know, show everything, you know. Like I said, it's a superpower to be vulnerable because it shows your stamp of humanity rather than this facade masquerading filled character who's just like oh trying to embody the fucking sentiment of a rock star or some shit do you know what i'm saying the people will tell you you're a fucking rock star or if not you're just a corny cheese ball you need to shut the fuck up <laughs> so yeah so what's your kind of opinion on the music scene at the moment and kind of like the industry because when i listen to the song all the same it just sounds like there's a few like references to the music scene i guess every artist is gonna feel like oh my god you know this is what music's not this music's not that but, you know, I get, I do, I you know, when, you, you know, you do stand on your hill and I guess I stand on this hill and I die on it. So, you know, I can't say these sentiments and take them back. I do, I take back a lot of things because I am also, you know, a very, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a happy contradictory hypocrite because I'm also willing to change. But, you know, one thing I do stand by is the fact that, you know, rock music is supposed to be a progressive field, not progressive in just culture, uh, diversity, et cetera, but the fact progressive in evolution of sound, like I said, stasis, staying in stasis is dangerous because I think with evolution of sound becomes change and not a lot of people like change. I feel like rock music is the only place where change is very scary to people because it almost becomes like, well, I know this so well, if you change this, it might start adding new nuances and people, new people, are, well, I gatekeep this, blah, blah, blah. And I think, you know, 
that's why I'm, I'm here with rock music because I, you know, I might not be the traditional rock artist. Sometimes I do. Sometimes it's just pure savagery. But other times I enjoy the bridge of hybrid and just where can rock music go? What is rock music now? Like, is rock, rock music isn't just what it was in the nineties. It's, it's not even what Aerosmith was anymore. So why, you know, why does it stop at fucking Lincoln Park or yeah. why? Me the horizon, the only evolutionary state you can get to. No, it, you know, it's it's different. It's complete. And, it, you know, this is why I'm here. And this is why I enjoy every show I leave. You could type in right now on Google and read every single review I've just done at every single show and see six to, well, 10 different strangers say, what have I just witnessed musically? And I think that's what, for me, that's enjoyable within rock music because it's like, you know, I don't want to be compared to, I don't want it to be compared to any fucking body. You can draw a reference. You can say this is a similarity, but I'm not fucking stag dress. I'm not fucking wargasm or fucking whoever the fuck there are. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be. Yeah. At all. You know, that's their own shit. That's, that's a sound of rock. I, I like, I don't want to always be, oh, we lumped into a sound. You know, I want, I enjoy the experience. And when I say this, this is not a shade to nobody. This is, you know, I'm actively on the internet. I see what the fuck's written and where people are lumped. So I'm not going to yeah. shy away from this shit. Like, I enjoy the mesmerization of not of having people wonder, guess, uh, consistently have to alter what I am. Am I a rapper kid bookie? Or oh, trap metal artist kid bookie? Or oh, singer slash rapper kid bookie? Guitarist? I fucking love it now. I used to be like, oh, I fucking hate rapper. No, I enjoy all of these little nuances that people give because it shows me that everyone leaves with a complete, you know, different kind of mental state to what I'm fucking doing. And I enjoy that in rock music. I enjoy it challenging that status quo i enjoy breaking it and i enjoy pissing all over what you thought so i mean you also signed with marshall records for this mass hysteria ep what made you want to go with them for this i think when you've dabbled close to many of the other places you know signing to a place where music is like the first and foremost trajectory of course everything else but the corporate mannerisms aren't so strong you know it's kind of like here's your platform your freedom to be the artist you want to be before I let you go, just have you got any final words, anything you want to say, plug? The final words are do not be a fucking prick and take time to understand the bullshit happens and get over it as fast as it fucking happens because life is too short to be a complete idiot. Live and let live or don't and don't and just be your fucking self. I'll let you go. Later, dude. Take care. Dude. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider supporting the podcast in any way that you can. We have a Patreon where you can get access to each episode a week early, along with some other perks, a merch store, or you can leave a review wherever you're listening to this. You can also follow me on social media or subscribe to the newsletter where I'll send out each episode to you via email, along with regular playlists. All of this can be found at itsnotaphase.co.uk. That's itsnotaphase.co.uk. Thanks again for listening, and remember, it's not a phase. It's a lifestyle.